Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at setting up the level of detail effect for your character creator characters when you import them into the Unity 3D game engine. So of course level of detail, or LOD being level of detail, the further away your game camera is from your character, the less requirements there are to have a high resolution mesh and a high resolution materials, a high definition mesh, high, high resolution materials. Uh, so as your camera gets further away from the character, uh, what you can, what LOD will do is it'll automatically swap out that character's mesh for a less detailed mesh, just to save system resources as your as your camera gets further away from the character, uh, object, whatever, what have you. Okay, so let's take a look at how to do that first. Let's take a look at the character's mesh. So with my character selected, I'm going to go to wireframe on shaded mode here. And you can see that we have a fairly optimized. This is our game base uh, character mesh. Okay, so fairly game optimized. And uh, if we go ahead and select our wearables instead of our character, so all of these items right here, shift select, and just put them into wireframe mode, you can see that the uh, face count, the uh, polygons are much higher, okay? So what we wanna do is we want to go ahead and reduce these before we move on, all right? Uh, so let's go ahead and do that by using the Insta LOD tool, all right? So click on Insta LOD. Of course, you have to have the pipeline version of a character creator in order to access the Insta LOD tool. All right, so let's go ahead and select polygon reduction wearables. So wearables will be your accessories and your clothing on your character, both, okay, and the shoes included. So we have a few options here, the recommended settings. We can uh, reduce it by percentage. So in this case, I've chosen 50%. Uh, and by face count, you can see we can enter in a num uh, number of faces if we want right there. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and choose by percentage, right, to 50%. You can see selected triangles currently at 22,116. So we're going to take it down to approximately 11,000 there. Now we don't need to bake the texture. But let's go ahead and select apply. And what's going to happen here is the Insta LOD tool will automatically reduce the poly count on my character. And you can see uh, in just a moment here that all those polygons have been dramatically reduced. Okay, so our character is much lower resource. And you can see as well over here in the scene manager, we have a couple of different items here under all of the different uh, uh, meshes. So for the the boots, for example, there's a boots underscore percentage 50, okay? So the suffix percentage 50 indicates the, basically the method that we use to reduce the polygon counts, okay? So if we if we took the percentage to 60, it would be percentage 60 instead. And if we took it, uh, change the face count instead, it would be, it would be like face count, uh, like 10,000 or, or 5,000 or what have you, okay? So the suffix basically contains the information on how you reduce those polygons. So uh, let's go let's take a look at the boots here first. Okay, so there's a couple items here, like I mentioned. Um, and the item that we have selected right now is shown is percentage 50. So this is the reduced version that we have selected. If we take these Centurion boots and make those visible, you can see that, boom, suddenly we have the original version uh, left. Okay, so if you want, you have the option to delete the original version or keep it there. Um, but... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show this one. You can see the poly count as well. Selected triangle, 2,479. If we activate the original, 4,958. Okay, so uh, uh, what you want to do here is just make all the uh, percentage ones visible. And you want to delete the original meshes. So century and boots here. This is whatever skirt it is there. I <laughs> can't read that properly. So we're going to just control and select all the items that we don't want. All the original meshes and the ones that are currently invisible. Okay, you can see the little eye is closed, which means they're hidden or invisible. All right, so let's go ahead and delete all those. And then we don't have to worry about them anymore. And our character is simplified and we have everything taken care of. Let's go ahead and just um, make those all uh, normal shading mode here as well. Um, and take off the polygon or wearables reduction tool there. Uh, now, one thing you may uh, encounter is if I select, you know, for example, this shoulder armor and I go to the materials here, there's a displacement map on that. Now, it's up to you. In, in a lot of cases, you may want to uh, delete the displacement map. Just go ahead and select it and uh, trash it down here. Uh, that may be causing, you know, some little, you saw a little modification there, a little change. Um, so we can take the centurion boots. No, skirt doesn't have it. This armor doesn't have it. Shoulder armor had it. Katana helmet doesn't have it. Okay. But uh, in, in some cases, you know, the displacement map that's uh, put on there may kind of uh, alter the mesh a little bit in a way that you don't want to. So you may want to consider deleting that. 
Okay, so that we've reduced the polygon count by about 10,000 polygons from uh, 57,000 to what it, uh, what it used to be to 46,000. Okay, so our character right now is pretty much fully optimized. Now we need to do a couple more things before we export the character, and that is to apply the game eyes and the game uh, teeth to our character. So if we select our character's mesh and go over here to materials, you'll notice that we have a number of different teeth meshes right here and uh, eye materials and meshes and whatnot. What we can do is we can actually go to our, uh, our uh, character right here, the uh, base tab, and go to your eyes, okay? And in the lower bottom, or the bottom section of the eye folder here, you'll find game eyes with one UV. Let's zoom in on the eyes so we can kind of just see here. And you can adjust the color on this right now, but we won't uh, bother with that right now. I'm just gonna go ahead and apply those to our character. And you can see now we have the selected triangles a lot lower, okay? So the lower poly count on the eyes and you can see we only have the one material. And if we select our character mesh, all those eyes have been replaced with this single eye material. So it's been uh, simplified. Okay, and that's generally what you wanna do. Okay, and for the teeth, let's go ahead and uh, go to the teeth section here. And I'm gonna just select my character and open his mouth first by going over here and selecting uh, this mouth thing right here. A uh, little mouth uh, icon, I guess you can call it. And you can see there's our character's uh, regular teeth. All right, and the materials, Okay, we have two separate materials for standard upper and lower. We can just replace those with the single UV uh, game teeth, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Just double click on the single UV game teeth and we'll have the single uh, material right there. The poly count will be lower. And if we uh, go ahead and open up the character's mouth one more time, there you go. Okay, however, you may want to adjust the uh, you know position of, of, this, of these teeth here. Maybe they're a little bit too high in the mouth. Uh, and you can see here that uh, if we take a closer look, not like anyone's really gonna take a closer look, but you can see the tongue's kind of poking through there. So let's make sure we edit the mesh on these teeth, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and edit mesh. First thing I'm gonna do is select element, and we're gonna select the lower teeth, okay? Separate element from the upper teeth. Press the W hotkey, and just move it down like that, okay? Um, and maybe move it a little bit forward here as well on the green axis, just like this, okay? And we can do the same thing for the upper teeth, okay? Select the upper teeth and move them, uh, move them down like this, and uh, there you go. Okay, so that's maybe uh, a bit more accurate. And of course, naturally, if you want to go into more detail, you can uh, edit the vertex you know, of all the individual different uh, teeth. Uh, for example, we can uh, bring these uh, molars or whatever they are <laughs> a little bit closer to the side there, so you can show some more, uh, show some more tongue or what whatnot if we want to. Okay, uh, and, and you can, you know, um, Hold shift to select additional vertices, okay? Let's just select it this way here. There you go, W, and get that over here. All right, and I mean, you know, obviously not, no one's gonna be really be looking into the mouth of the character, so uh, <laughs> unless they're strange, they wanna look into the mouth of the NPC, uh, then, you know, they can by all means go ahead and do that. All right, but uh, generally, you know, just wanna get, uh, show you how you can modify the different, uh, you know, parts of, of your character's uh, teeth and whatnot in their mouth. Okay, so we'll go ahead and work with that and we'll uh, close our character's mouth back up there. And the next item of business is to export uh, with different LOD, level of details. Okay, now there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can go to File, Export, and FBX from here, or you can go to your Insta LOD tool and you can just go to Remesher. Okay, so what this will do, we need to make sure we choose the target tool preset to Unity 3D since we're exporting into Unity. We do not want to embed the textures, okay? So we're just gonna go ahead and deselect that. I do want to include a few motions here, okay? I'm just gonna go to my custom motions here and add a couple. And we need to select the correct folder here. Uh, CC3, we have uh, this folder right here. There we go. Okay, so just select uh, these files. I'm gonna load those in. Okay, so we're just gonna have one motion for the character. Now it's very important here that you make sure that your uh, T-pose uh, starts with a zero underscore and then T-pose, okay? You want to make sure you uh, export that along with your character and make sure it's, a, it's number one on the list, okay? Because it's going to use this as a reference pose uh, when it's imported into Unity, okay? And you don't need to worry about deleting hidden mesh right now. You can if you want. But we're going to focus on Insta LOD here, okay? So Insta LOD, we're going to, of course, use the remesher. We can keep the original avatar. We're going to choose three different level of details, okay? So we're gonna export basically three, three separate meshes, each with their own separate level of detail. Okay, so for level one, we're gonna choose a, uh, 
we're going to choose a maximum face count. We're going to set a maximum face count of 11,000 here. Okay, so 11,000. We're going to choose a high mesh detail. And we're going to choose a max a base texture, or bake rather, texture size of 2048. Okay, for number two, we're going to choose a maximum face count of 5,500. Okay, uh, the mesh detail we're going to select uh, change to normal. And the base texture size, or bake texture size, will be 1024. And number three, uh, the maximum face will do 2700. Again, this is going to be so far away from the camera, you won't be able to notice anything. And just choose a low mesh detail and 1024. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and export all stuff. So we'll go to export, and uh, obviously you're not going to be able to re-import those uh, meshes in because we've changed the UVs quite significantly. And go ahead and press OK. So let's just go ahead and export this to that same folder there. Uh, doo -doo -doo, here we go. And we'll just uh, create a new folder here called... Uh, Warrior Export. Okay, and go into there and we'll name him Warrior. Okay, for lack of a better name, and that'll take a couple minutes to export. Okay, so what we should have once that export is finished is we should have uh, separate FBM folders for all of the different uh, FBXs right here. So we have the level of detail zero, which is the original file, and then the three different levels of detail following that. And it's indicated by the face count right here. You can see 11,500 and 2,700. Okay, so we have that all in a folder called Warrior Export. So this is going to be very important a little bit later on. So now let's go into Unity. And in Unity, the first thing we need to do is import in that script. Again, the script is available in the uh, description of this video. You can download for free. Uh, so to do that, just right click and select Import Package. We're going to import a custom package. And I need to find uh, all files right here. And you'll find this bad boy. And this is the one that you want to import in. And this will basically uh, set up everything for your character import into Unity uh, 3D, okay? So again, it's just gonna import in the CC Assets folder and Editor folder. Let's go ahead and import that. And once that's finished, again, you'll have a Scenes folder, or rather you have an Editor folder right here, which contains the uh, Editor script, this one right here, okay? And you'll also have the CC Assets folder. And if you click on the README, and you can see it says here, put all your character FBX files into this folder, please. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Explorer and we're going to import in that entire folder that contains all of our different LODs, okay? So the script is actually super useful because what it does is when you import in your characters now, it's going to apply all the, all the materials on your character to their correct places. Not only is it gonna do that, but it's also going to set up all the motions you exported with your FBX into an animation controller so you can use it right off the bat. So basically you don't really have to do anything. Your, your character is all set up for materials and the animation controller is already set up as well for your characters that integrates all of the motions. Of course, uh, obviously you'd wanna probably modify that and enhance it later on um, for more complex games, but here I'm just showing a demo and I'll show you the animation controller in just a moment. All right, so once it's done importing in all of those assets, you can go into your uh, Warrior uh, Export folder here, and you can see that we have the prefabs. We have the Warrior Zero or Zero Warrior prefab here, okay? So I created one prefab, and if we click and drag that into our uh, uh, scene, our hierarchy there, you can see that an LOD zero appears on the screen and all of the LODs have already been loaded in. Okay, so this is another advantage of using that script. It basically sets up all your LODs already. Okay, so we can just go ahead and uh, take a look at our character. Okay, this is the same character. All the materials are perfect, just the way we left it in Character Creator 3 and that's the way we want it. Okay, um, so what we can do now is if we select the prefab here in the hierarchy, we have this LOD uh, section right here. Okay, so LOD group. What we can do is we can click and drag this camera and you can see that it'll actually automatically adjust the LODs according to how far your camera is from the character. Okay, so there's LOD1. So from here to here, we're switching over to LOD1. Okay, and you can adjust this level as well. So if I wanted to, you know, for it to switch a little bit earlier, say like this, for example, almost right away, I wanted it to switch to LOD1 and I can click and drag here. And from there to there, it's actually switching to the LOD1 mesh, okay? And you can see right here, uh, the renderer is the LOD1 mesh. Over here, let's see, LOD2 remesh, okay? And so on and so forth. Here, uh, move over here, this is the LOD3, uh, all right? So again, you probably just wanna keep this at a fairly reasonable level, I think maybe up, about up to here. From this point on, you probably can't tell any difference in the character, so. You know, again, it's all really up to you, depending on your character and the particular scene, you can adjust this accordingly. 
So one issue you may encounter is if we uh, go really in really close here on our character, we move over to the hands here a little bit. Um, let's just zoom in real close there and uh, pan up. You can see that the normals on the hands might be a little bit off, okay? So you can see it's kind of like a little bit bent out of shape there. Uh, so what you want to do in this case is you want to make sure that you select your character's original mesh, not the prefab. So go into the warrior export folder one more time here and select this character right here. And you'll see that normal and tangents, you can see normals are calculated right here. What you want to do is you want to go ahead and go to window first and select auto processing for CC character. So this is what the plugin or this is what the uh, script does. Okay, it creates this window and you want to deselect auto processing. And then you want to go change your normals from calculate to import. And once you do that, just go ahead and select apply one more time. Okay, and that'll adjust them to the way they're supposed to be. And we'll enclose that down for now. And there you go. Okay, so if you ever encounter that sort of issue, then that's how you fix it. All right, so let's take a quick look at the animation controller here. Okay, so here's the animation controller. You can see it's already been set up, all right? So just with the LOD motion and this LOD motion, if we uh, double click on it, you can see this is the motion right here. If we play it back, it's kind of like a cool uh, chopping motion, all right? Just like this. All right, so what we want to do is we want to select loop time for this motion, all right? And then just go down and select apply. So we have that motion continually looping uh, over and over and over again. All right, then we can go out of the animator, go into uh, scene mode here, and we can play back. You can see we need to bring our camera up to the uh, to the front of the character there. So let's just go ahead and uh, get out of there and zoom out. Take the little camera doodad over here and uh, we'll bring it, uh, where's our, there we go, blue axis right here. I'll just bring it over to here. Nothing too far away. And we need to rotate this camera, pressing the E hotkey to rotate it, and we'll rotate it to negative 180 degrees. How's that sound? Or maybe just 180 degrees. Oh, put in a bunch of weird numbers there. All right, let's just make sure you select everything and pull a 180. There we go. All right, now we're facing the character. We can press the W hotkey, move it a little bit further away, perhaps. And let's just take our light as well and uh, select the light and. Uh, Maybe use the e hotkey to rotate that a little bit so that we can see the character's face a little bit better. There we go. Something like that. And then we can give her a play and we should be able to get a nice view of the character. Oh. Make sure that main camera for some reason went behind the character again. Oh, yeah, we need to get a little bit further, <laughs> further in front of the character. Let's take it over here. All right, that should be good. Maybe a little further down. Okay. So that should, uh, that should do the trick. All right, there we go. All right, and maybe even a little bit higher for that camera. All right, and the game window here, you can see that we have the uh, tries, 67.8. Okay, and uh, you know, very, 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 very light project for a single character and very good looking character. And of course, if we uh, move the camera away, From the character in scene view with the character selected, you can see that uh, the level of details will change. Zero, one, two, three, and four, the further away we get from our character. It can be playing at the same time as well. Uh, with the character selected, you can just uh, you know, go into the scene mode here and, uh, okay. There you go, switching from one to two to three and so on and so forth, all right? So that's really about all there is to it. That's how easy it is to really just import your character. Uh, the Everything will already be set up, okay? So all of the uh, materials will all be, already be set up. The LODs will already be put in place. Uh, the, animation, the, uh, the animation controller will already be set up. Everything will basically be set up. So all you gotta do is just import in that script, make sure you run it, and then import all your assets into the CC assets folder. And pretty much everything from that point is done for you. All right, so that's about all there is to it, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, hopefully you check out our other tutorials on our YouTube channel and make sure you check, make sure you check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com and I hope to see you in the next video.